Faye Dunaway, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. They have my picture. Of course they do. <laughs> Thank you. How fabulous to have you here in okay, Sydney. I believe it's not very comfortable, I've been told. You can oh, tell really? me if it is well. It's, it's all right. It's, it's not so bad? <laughs> yeah. That's what I like. A game girl. Straight down. Um, <laughs> hey, how lovely to have you here. And, and, Thank uh, you. I guess you must have some affection for this place. I know you lived here for, in the UK for one oh, the 80s. I, yeah, I, I lived here for an entire decade. Wow. You know, you have during a, the 80s. Fond memories of that period? I do. It was a time where my career had just gone, you know, up and up and up and up. And it was um, a time for relaxing and getting out of the, the kind of system a little bit. And I found that here with uh, my husband, Terry O'Neill, then, oh, and yeah. my son. Yeah. I had a lovely, lovely time here. Wow. And so 10 years. And then you went back. You're now in Los Angeles again, are you? Over I am in L.A., wow. yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, while you're here, you must have seen many fine television shows. Do you remember, did you go on Sir Michael's show? Did you meet Michael Parkinson while you were over here in that period? Uh, yeah, yeah, we had an interview. He just, we were just speaking of it. The night I won, the day I won the Oscar, the night I won the Oscar, the morning after, which O'Neill... This was for that, Network, of course. For right? Network, Fantastic right. film. And we, we had an interview at that time. Yeah. I remember there's a fantastic photograph. I think we have the photograph that was taken oh. with the piece that uh, Michael wrote for the Sunday Times, I think. That's that, the one. That's and that, that's a, and that called a great called The Morning photograph. After. Classic oh. photograph by Terry O'Neill. Great and, photographer. And was that when, uh, and, you, and you married Mr O'Neill? I did. Uh, yeah. And I believe, so Michael introduced the two of you. Yes, he wow. did, actually. <laughs> and this evening, <laughs> this evening, he's introduced you to Alan Carr. <laughs> <laughs> now, we uh, just saw you on screen there in uh, one of my all-time favourite movies of that period, the Thomas Crown Affair. Right, yeah. What an incredible movie. It was a great film, oh, yeah. And you've worked with so many of the great leading men, but Steve McQueen, mm. uh, he had just something special, didn't he? He did. And, I mean, I've, I was lucky. I've worked with so many wonderful ones, you know, I mean, Newman, and we'll talk about him perhaps yeah. later, yes, and Jack Nicholson. But Steve had a kind of wonderful street integrity about him. He, I love the way he pulled his vest down and... He was just a great, great guy. I he had him. some. I always, I mean, I've read a bit about him, and I've, I've, you know, looked into his life a little bit as a fan. I know he had, yeah. a, you know, he had a rough childhood. He did, of course. Very. And I wonder whether that kind of coloured or informed the man he was, because he seemed to have a certain. He seemed to be quite self-contained. He did. Yeah, I think it does. I think rough beginnings do that. I mean, when you do, then find what you're, you're the answer to your dreams, or find something that you really love doing, or find success on any level. You know what you've got, and you uh, you compare it to you know the kind of modest beginnings that he had and many of us have had. Let's talk about, so you mentioned Paul Newman earlier yeah. and of course it was sad news that last weekend he yeah. passed and we yeah. don't have him anymore. Yeah. What no, a tremendous man, a yeah. tremendous human yeah. being. I mean his work with various charities over the years was, was just inspiration but also as a performer to work in once again and here you are in a movie, if I was in a movie with Steve McQueen and Paul Newman. <laughs> That's just, that's, that's incomprehensible. By that. It was pretty intense. That must have been some experience. <laughs> it was heady stuff, yeah. Towering Inferno. Now, how is it working with Paul? Oh, how there did he, we are. How oh, did he God. differ as an actor, say, to McQueen? He's, uh, that's a great shot, it's true. Great, isn't it? They both had a spark, you know. Steve was more contained, perhaps, but Paul had his dignity as well. You know, uh, Sally Field said the best thing about Paul last week, and I thought it was true, that every now and again, God makes perfect people, and Newman was one of them. And he just had everything. He had, and he had such a, I mean, I'm sure Steve would have moved into other things if he'd lived longer. He was tragic, had a tragically shorter life. But Paul really cared about people, and he's left quite a legacy in his work as well as what, in all of the charity work he's done. I often felt that maybe, I mean, not so much later on, but earlier on, he was held back a bit by just being so handsome. Yeah, oh, they say, yeah. You know, he was like yeah. too pretty almost, yeah. and people and didn't take him seriously. And yeah, and I know from experience that that is a difficult thing. <laughs> <laughs> to, uh... <laughs> I apologise. Okay, uh, okay. Here we go. While we're going through the great leading men, Robert Redford, another Where Robert Redford. Uh, Three Days of the Condor, another great movie, which seems like a caper movie. You like that movie. film? I'm oh, I love that. Yeah. Well, I like all okay. these movies we've discussed right. so far. No, a lot of people really like Three Days of the Condor. I love it. For some I, I watch Thomas Crown once, uh, at least once a year. I watch that probably once every two months. Oh, well, lovely. Yeah, I know. Yeah. My wife can't stand me sometimes. <laughs> and Citizen Good came once a week. Um, Good for you. Uh, now, what was he like? What was he like to work with? How convincing was he in the role? Did you enjoy that? Oh, Redford, you know, he, he, we had uh, some trouble, I have to say, though, because my character was kidnapped by him right. and in mortal fear of being raped or God knows what or, you know, harm coming to her. And you can't have those feelings about Redford. You know? He's <laughs> It doesn't he's, look like the sort of man no. who's going to force well, himself on you. You just say, yes, fine, good. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> because he's so gorgeous and he has such, such a kind of wonderful charisma. He really is. Looking at your career, it's like a who's who are the greatest moments of recent Hollywood years. Um, Marlon Brando, Faye's worked with. Johnny Depp, you yeah. worked with. Uh, Jack Nicholson. Let's talk about Jack Nicholson because Chinatown, once again, a remarkable movie, uh, notable for several remarkable performances, yeah. not least yours. The scenes with John him, they're, they're very... John Huston, brilliant. But Nicholson and, of course, you know, a great, if, if perhaps, trouble director, Roman Polanski. Yeah. Well, and when you're making a movie like that, I mean, there's a movie that came out, once again, we're talking about, that was about 74, I think, uh, made a huge impact. I yeah, mean, just I a guess. huge impact. And it was, uh, it, it was set in a period where you couldn't have dealt with those themes as blatantly uh, in the movies of the time. That's as true. You did in right, Powerful right. film yeah. as well. Yeah. You've always made, I think, interesting choices. You seem to Thanks. seek out those. Yeah, thank those sort you. Of well, you know, they, uh, you know, this was the, the kind of early career and the main career that I had. And I did have a lot of choices. But you're right. It is the choices. You have to choose. Network, I was, nobody wanted me to play Network because this was a kind of an automaton. This was a, a woman who really had lost touch with her heart. Yeah, a cold feelings. woman, a cold and difficult yeah, character. Yeah, really. And, and completely driven by the success ethic of America and TV and getting it on and a hit show. It was a black comedy, because it was, and that was, was the fun part to play. That last scene was really fun to play, because we had to play it for real. But anyway, I mean, everyone said, you can't play that, you can't play her, you know? And I said, oh, no, 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 I have to play this one. And it was my instinct, but I was lucky. You know, I was lucky that I just kind of had a sense that, I mean, the writing was so good. It was yeah. just after Hospital, it was Patty Chayefsky. Patty Chayefsky, yeah. yeah. So, um, and you won the Oscar, of course. That must have I been, uh, that's, yeah. a, that's a wonderful night out, isn't it? Going it out is. picking yeah. up an Oscar. <laughs> it's pretty mind-blowing. It really is. Um, well, you know, here, here's the thing. I think I speak for everyone in the room. All the men in the room, certainly, I know, and the women as well. You're a beautiful woman. You always have been a beautiful woman. Uh, but I wonder if playing those kind of roles, you got people sort of time cost you as a bit of a, a bitch, a bit of a yeah, cold fish. I think so. Fish. And that was a kind of a downbeat toward... I mean, they, I don't know. I think in careers, you have to watch out as they go on because somehow women do get frozen into a sort of larger than life, you know, I don't know, I don't, I don't know if people don't know how to write the kind of roles that Paul and Steve got later in, in their In a life. way, it's a compliment though, you play something too well, <laughs> well people think I that's don't. you, they, they want to, and they want to see more of the same perhaps, you know. Yeah, possibly, I don't know, I don't understand. Let me ask you about um, uh, you as a person to work with and around, uh, how have you been over the years, how have you changed, when you had success, did it, did it go to your head, did it change, have you mellowed, were you a diva ever, did you make demands, what? Looking oh, back, those are terrible questions. Yeah, well. <laughs> have I got to be honest? Um, was I a diva? I didn't really. It may have come off like that sometimes. I think. I mean, I certainly never locked my dressing room door. Or, I mean, I've always tried to. I know this. May, maybe this sounds like a cop out, but I just am crazy to make it good. I'm crazy to get it as good as it possibly can be. And sometimes that. You know, and I'm devoted to that and really committed to that, so, uh, above, almost above all else. But I don't think I've been unkind with people or rude with people, but I have been kind of maniacal about, when, when, about trying to get it as good as it can be. What do you yeah. do uh, if you want to, when, when the day is finished, what's the kind of point for you when you say, work is done, I'm going to relax? What kind of little treat do you give yourself or what kind of signal is there? That the, the work is over and you can relax? Not too much. Diet Coke really is my max Just at the, the Diet moment, Coke. yeah. <laughs> And uh, I watch films, you know. And so you relax, you like a movie? Yeah. Okay, a massage perhaps? Not really, no. I don't think they work, okay. really. Do you, have, uh, do you have animals? Do you have pets? No. No pets? Just with the, my one son. Okay. Who well, does? the son's not really a pet. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and he's old now. Yeah. He's my they're, they're a lot more work than pets, I believe, aren't they? Uh, we have a clip, a little bit of film that I suspect you haven't seen for a long while. Oh, I'd love, yeah. This I'd is from, I think, 67, when you came over to the UK right. to help right. promote Bonnie and Clyde. Yeah. And the fashions were sweeping Carnaby Street. I know, at that this? time, you see, at that time, we hadn't been well reviewed in America. It was Britain that gave. Bonnie and Clyde did success, really? really. And when we, I came over at Carnaby, we'll see, I'm dying to see it again. I looked out and there was a sea of people who looked just like me with the berets. Well, and I thought, what's going on? And then very shortly, it really took it off. Spread and back to America. Then the reviews in America changed. They said, oh, we, we, we were wrong about this film. Yeah. We didn't understand Incredible. it. Incredible. Well, this see is uh, it. like newsreel footage from about 67. Uh, it's the Christmas lights going on in Carnaby Street and Faye was the guest of honor. That's great. Fabulous. Thank you. The eyelashes. That's great. The eyelashes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> now, I would quite happily go and see a new movie with you in two or three times a year. I'm pleased to say there is another one coming out soon. Uh, tell me about Flick. It sounds pretty unusual. Oh, yeah. It's, it's a fascinating little piece um, that I did uh, in Wales, actually. And David, the director, is such an innovative uh, guy. I mean, he made me think of Chris Nolan. And in fact, 
It is um, premiering tomorrow night at the Rain Dance, which is where Memento, Nolan's first film, premiered. And it was just this idiosyncratic kind of odd detective, American detective with one arm, <laughs> who had a false arm and a false hand and drinks her coffee with it, and I just thought, this is too irresistible. So you're one arm detective. Yeah. <laughs> that's, so once again, you're going for the interesting choices here. Um, that's quite something. And, and she's an American in Wales, though. She, yeah. Okay. She's a, a, you know, a guest. A, okay. a guest person. Uh, well. You've got some great British people in there alongside you. Liz Smith, who we love. She's like yeah, a national she's treasure over here. Great some fantastic uh, Let's have a look at a clip. This is Flick. It's going to be early next year. It's going to be opening over here, but this is a It's a really preview. innovative piece, though. The well, it looks, it looks yeah, exciting. And you can see uh, he's, uh, he's He's got a vision, this director. He yeah, knows what he, he wants to does. put on screen. This is Faye Dunaway in Flick. He's not out for a while, but this is just a little sneak peek. <laughs> you see? That makes me want to see more. Yeah, uh, He's mixed the cartoon. David has mixed the cartoon with real action, and it's really very stylish, interesting film. Uh, and whether uh, are you can do any more films with him, do you know? Are you going to work with him again? If he asked me, I will, right. yeah. Uh, what's Definitely. next for you? What, what's lined up for you next after this? Well, you know, I've been working on my first feature myself as a director in wow. the independent film well, Masterclass. It's a play by Terence McNally. And Looks like we've got maybe, we've got half the money, and and so we're at that stage now. Well, that's now that's Val you, Kilmer is going to be in it. Have Alan you wanted, Cumming, the wonderful Alan Cumming. When you get the money, when it finished, when you're when you're ready to debut over here, you I'm must here. please come back on the show. I'm here. That's okay, a uh, I'm Thank sure you'll you. agree. A fabulous guest. How how splendid yeah. to spend some time in your company, ladies and gentlemen. The one and only oh, Faye Dunaway. Thank you. Thank you, Faye. Thank you how lovely you were. Thank you very much. I must send you over a documentary of this made about a filmmaker. Will you? Yeah, we'll that would be great. Faye Dunaway, ladies and gentlemen.